We are still in France. We have to get on a ferry. Hi, my name is Tina and in the last six months I have been to about 15 countries. I quit my job in Tokyo to build my own business and to travel around the world for one year or as long as my money lasts. And I am now in London. with our luggage, go through security, uh, basically the same thing that you do at the airport, custom security, passport control. Taking a bus is one of the cheapest options to get around in Europe. However, I wouldn't recommend you to take a bus from like literally any country to the UK because you have to get on a ferry and border control and waiting time are a bit of a hustle. They gave us like one and a half hour to walk around here. If I would need to do this trip again, I would take the train. It's it's a huge hustle, actually. <laughs> we got a little voucher before for a free meal and a drink. I got some sandwiches. It's shaking because the ferry is moving. And we're probably uh, one, two hours late or something like that. Hey guys, so yesterday I finally arrived at my hostel and then you can take public transport but I just wanted to get as quickly as possible to my hostel after a like 10 hour bus ride. I took an Uber and I was able to do that because I have always an eSIM installed on my phone. I've been using Eralo since I started my trip which is an app that offers eSIMs and they are amazing. eSIM means literally embedded SIM and is a digital version of your physical SIM card. So maybe you can already imagine that it's so much easier to simply download and install an eSIM instead of every time having to go to a shop and buy like actually a physical local SIM card somewhere. So for me personally this is just the main reason why I'm using eSIM. Eralo offers eSIMs for over 200 countries and regions. You can choose between a local, a regional and a global eSIM. I'm currently using one for Europe so no matter to which country I'm going in Europe I can use the same eSIM. You can usually choose between like I think 7, 15, 14 or 30 days and then some something like 1 giga, 2 giga, 3, 5 and if you're running out of data you can always top up your plan. And a really cool feature about Eralo is that you also get e-money. Every time you buy an eSIM you will get a little bit of e-money, you can save it and then you can use it to buy your next eSIM. In order to use Eralo you just download it, choose your destination, look for your eSIM, choose your plan and install. It's that easy. Usually Eralo should work on all iPhones and Android devices but just to be on the safe side make sure that your phone is compatible with eSIM Sims. You can find a list of compatible devices on Eralo's website. I will also link that list down below, so check that out first. Nearly all devices are compatible with eSIMs, so there shouldn't be any issues. Once you installed your eSIM, you just have to activate it and you can do that either immediately or you can do that later. Usually your eSIM should work right away. If not, you can also check out the instructions that they give you and change the settings on your phone accordingly. If it still doesn't work, you can contact the Eralo support 20 hours a day and they will be able to help you out pretty quick. I'm using Eralo because they are comparatively really cheap, so it's perfect if you're on a budget. Some of their plans even cover SMS and phone calls. Also when I arrive at a new destination, usually I always reinstall and activate my eSIM so that I can already use it when I'm at the airport. Another thing that I really like about eSIMs is that no matter where I am I can always look up for example my emails which are really important and also important documents. I mean imagine being at the airport sometimes they want to see like an onward ticket or whatever to your next city. Using an eSIM can make your travel life so much easier. If you want to give Eralo a try use the link in the description to download Eralo today and don't forget to use my code TINAH3 to get three US dollars off your first eSIM on a rando. This is my room. I got a private room here. Staying at a hostel is another great way of saving money. Especially in Europe where living costs and literally everything is a little bit more expensive. In London I stayed at Kling Hostels. On my way heading to a coffee shop because the Wi-Fi at my hostel, it's kind of okay, it kind of works. But for some reason, uploading things takes so long. I've never seen that before. Like, I, You might get tired of me going to coffee shops instead of showing you more of the city. However, this is my way of showing you a little bit of the behind the scenes of a digital nomad life. But let me know in the comments if you want to see less of those coffee shop visits. It's working, it's uploading. Yay. 
really cool thing about London is that actually many of the museums have free entry. All you need to do is to make a reservation online and to get a ticket online. I'm heading right now to the British Museum. Let's see how it is. I've never been there. Did you know that London is considered one of the most multicultural cities globally? With over 300 languages spoken by its residents, this diversity greatly influences the city's culture, cuisine and overall vibrancy. I got a ticket for 10, 10, but I got an email from them that you can basically enter at any time after the time slot you chose, which is pretty convenient. So the line. <laughs> The line in front of the museum is insane, but it should move forward soon because it opens in a minute. I think the line that I had was nothing compared to what will be happening here later in the day. Cameras and all are allowed as long as it's for personal use, so I shouldn't do this maybe walking around here. Um, that always looks suspicious to people. <laughs> If you don't have a lot of time, they marked on this map the most important things that you want to see when you're here, which is pretty cool. I was really surprised to learn that many museums in London have free entry as long as you make a reservation online beforehand. The British Museum in London is one of the oldest and most renowned museums in the world. It was established in 1753 and houses a vast collection of world art and artifacts, including the Rosetta Stone. Okay, I spent a lot more time in there than I thought I would, like about three hours-ish. I'm hungry, so I want to try to get some lunch somewhere. That you're smart, that your casual conversation, even the short duration, can cover everything from science based to art. It's so obnoxious that Successfully got the English breakfast, so let's try it. Honestly, I love it. I had English breakfast before, that's not the first time I'm getting that. My younger self would definitely not eat this, but... So that was a very good lunch. I very much enjoyed my first half of the day. We're now walking through Covent Garden. I wanted to come here anyway. Guys, I'm now on Trafalgar Square. I've been to London before, but I can't remember sh honestly. It's so impressive. Like, I'm so glad I came back. So, I can see Big Ben from here. <laughs> It started to rain a little bit and it's going to rain today and it's going to rain a little bit in a couple of days. Did you know that the name of the tower is not Big Ben but Elizabeth Tower? Big Ben is actually the name for the massive 13 tons bell inside the clock tower. From here you can also easily walk to the London Eye, which is by the way the tallest ferris wheel in Europe. Good morning everyone, it's the next day and I thought today we go to the Natural History Museum, I got a reservation. However today it's raining so it's probably the only thing that we're doing today. So my phone just told me to enter via the underground entrance and I think I have to take the Piccadilly line. The subway in London is the oldest subway in the world. London Underground was opened in 1863 for locomotive trains and in 1890 it became the world's first metro system. It is also known as the Tube. Finally got in, it did not take very long, like if you're here like 50 minutes early, that's perfect. So yeah, let's explore. Going to the Natural History Museum, what I noticed is that because it is free and because it's very popular, it's also a little bit crowded and noisy, but because it is really exciting to go through all of the exhibitions, I'd recommend you to go at least once. I had no breakfast today, so I paid 6.20 in pounds for a cookie and a coffee. <gasps> I spent about two hours in here, I would say, yeah, it's really cool, but also because it's really cool, it's so much more popular than other museums. It's free, it's free, so for that. Um Good morning, everyone, it's the next day, and today I'm going to meet up with a friend. As she's from the UK, 
she probably knows a little bit more about London than I do. It's funny, I got my fish and chips, but look at this. <laughs> look at the size. Size comparison. Okay, let's try this. And this fries. Triple fries. Yeah. You can't make much wrong. So that was a really good lunch. I had my fish and chips. Yay. And by the way, I'm today here with my friend Lost. It's so obnoxious that you're kind. That you always have time for family and help out everybody. Has a familiar things don't matter. What's the gap between Really? Does, does it not have a name? <laughs> okay, so we just arrived at our station and we're at the monument and I'm just being told that it's called the monument. Let's see. Yeah, it has, it's, this is the monument. No joke. I was planning on going to this building. It's called a Sky Garden and it's supposed to be, it is free, it is, but we just saw online that you probably have to book in advance and not just like one or two days, like three weeks. We're still going there and try if we can get can in or not. You. It's maddening that you make me Just a quick little update, we did not get into the building. It's free, but you have to book them in advance. Oh my gosh, the world uh, here, Alice in Wonderland. This is, by the way, the Balloon Museum. Wouldn't believe it. <laughs> Hi, GoPro. Yeah. <laughs> Made it to the Tower of London. And guess what? I was expecting a tower. <laughs> no, no joke. I'm not well prepared this time. Spontaneous, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. The Tower Bridge and the Tower of London are two of the must visit places when you come to London. The Tower of London was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It is housing the crown jewels and it is known for its medieval architecture. If you go inside, it will tell you stories of executions and royal intrigue. So I'd highly recommend you to check it out and maybe even get a guided tour. We have the best view here. It's so cold. <laughs> it's like super windy. And we're now we're walking across the Tower Bridge, which is pretty cool. While heading to the Shard, we also discovered this market. Borough Market is one of the oldest and largest food markets in London. <laughs> the Shard is, by the way, the tallest building in the United Kingdom at 310 meters or 1017 feet. It was designed by architect Renzo Piano and it was completed in 2012. Yeah, look at this. So cool. We started our journey the there sunset. somewhere and then we went all the way across the bridge. Came here. By your casual conversation, even a short duration can cover everything from science based to art. It's so obnoxious that you're kind. That you always have time for family and help out everybody. As if a million things don't get by your mind. If you could be just a little less perfect, then I could say I don't have time and it's not worth it. It's nice. It's like 11. It's just 
just like a lemonade. It's like being in a fancy bar. We have this fancy view here. How do, how do you like it? I bloody love it. Like this is a goal worth achieving. Well, she's really enjoying her time. You're enjoying her time? <laughs> we just came all the way up to the next deck, to the sky deck, and it's open, and <laughs> it means it's really cold. It's already night, yeah, you can see it's um, dark here, so it's pretty late. And wow, and it's raining, <laughs> so it's raining, getting wet. Can you see that? Oh gosh. By the way, that's why it's called the shard. Yeah. The view is incredible though. Hello everyone and I'm back in the city. I actually, this is my last day in London and I didn't want to film anything today but I just was looking at Google Maps and <laughs> I found something really cool and it's for free. Oh no, what? What's happening? Oh, okay. <laughs> you want to check it out? Cool store. Not 100% sure, but I think this is either the exit or the entrance. I think this is the place we uh, wanted to go to. Oh, yeah, here. And this is totally free, by the way. They're doing this until the summer. I don't know exactly which day, but until summer. So if you come to London in the next couple of months. Together. So thank you for hanging out. Thank you so much for having me. It's been absolutely lovely. Finally, actually meet you after months of chatting. Exactly. Yeah. Thanks so much. Had, a, had had an amazing time here with my friend in London. So also follow her on her YouTube channel. I will link it down below. Okay, guys. This is probably the last thing that I'm going to do in London because tomorrow I have to go to my next destination. I have to get up very early. I hope you enjoyed this video. We did. A lot of free stuff here in London as well, which surprised me. I had an amazing, wonderful time, and I hope you too. 